welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will find out what the Quincy Symphony Orchestra is up to for the upcoming holiday season and beyond. First, though, as always, we do check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, cloudy out there, a few sunny breaks. It's chilly, too, 37 degrees. It really won't get much warmer than that today, maybe around 39 or 40 degrees, more clouds than sun. Tonight, uh, partly cloudy, chilly. Lows will drop off into the upper 20s tomorrow kind of a repeat we've got the clouds and sun high tomorrow again around 40 degrees then the uh, first day of december arrives on wednesday with uh, some sunshine and milder temperatures wednesday's highs into the mid 40s even warmer on Thursday with the chance of some showers and Thursday's highs into the low 50s. It'll start to cool down again toward the end of the week. But again in Quincy right now, cloudy 37 degrees. In the news today, Quincy College is now offering a four year bachelor's program in business management. College President Rick DeCristofaro says that after a 10 year process, the baccalaureate program has been approved by the State Department of Higher Education and the New England Commission of Higher Education. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says the new program will help bolster enrollment at Quincy College. You know, the last couple of years has been battling like every other community college on enrollment because it's just not the number of kids there used to be. Uh, but they, they've stabilized and they're, and they're doing well. And, you know, this was uh, part of the mission a few years ago, the baccalaureate degrees, and, and they're starting one. I think a couple of programs, I think business management is one of them. Uh, but it's exciting. It really is. I think the college has a great future, and, and uh, I think that a lot of folks believe that, you know, the two years is great, but there's some areas that we probably could serve the population they serve with the baccalaureate degrees in certain areas, and this is a great start. Enrollment in the new four-year program for business management is already underway. Plus, current and transfer students can also take a third-year course in business management beginning in January. De Cristofaro says that Quincy College is now the only two-year school in the state with a bachelor's degree program. He called it a watershed moment in the history of Quincy College. The MBTA will begin tearing down the former Lowe's Home Improvement Store on the Bergen Parkway in Quincy next year. During a recent community meeting, T officials said they'll begin demolition of that building in early 2022 to make way for their new bus maintenance facility. MBTA project manager Scott Hamway said the T is hoping that bus ridership levels will bounce back as the pandemic wanes. We're all, you know, optimistic that transit's going to come back and, and be where it was pre-COVID and, and grow. And I think that, yeah, this is, uh, it's, that garage serves kind of a dual purpose now and it's it's well located relative to the highway network. So it's a great place for us to get um, South Shore folks that are trying to get on the red line and avoid a driving trip into downtown, which is exactly what we want to encourage. And, you know, it also, um, it's also a revenue stream for the T. So we need to, we need, we need to sort of like Steve says, make sure we're not, you know, sacrificing revenue and, and customer access. But, you know, I, I think it's, that's the type of thing, right, that can certainly be looked at in the future. If we're sitting here 10 years from now, five years after the facility opens and this, and this lot's never more than half full, you know, there could be discussions about how we use that space. And likewise, if, if red line ridership does not return to where it was or demand for the station doesn't return, then I think yeah, that's something that could be explored down the road. But I think right now we're 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 trying to be optimistic and hope that hope that ridership comes all the way back and, and continues the, the growth trajectory it was on before COVID. The new garage will be built to accommodate up to 150 buses, but about a third of those are expected to be electric buses. The new garage will be replacing the T's existing 100 year old garage on Hancock Street. It is expected to be completed in late 2024. Oh, it's a holiday gift for the 200 liquor license holders in the city of Quincy. City Clerk Nicole Crispo says that Mayor Thomas Koch has agreed to waive the $2,000 renewal fee for the second year in a row. The mayor has come um, before us twice now asking for um, the board to waive the fee. So um, we, we will be sending something out to all the um on-premise liquor license um, with just to update their information, make sure that we have the latest information in their um, 
their insurance information, but um, that Mr. Mayor did um, waive the fee. Mayor has also agreed to waive the liquor license renewal fees for this year in an effort to help small businesses who've been struggling through the pandemic. Mayor said that the city could make up the $400,000 in lost fees through the hotel motel tax and excise taxes, building permits and other existing fees. A Quincy City Council President Nina Liang is nearing the end of her two year term as City Council President. And she has some advice for the next council president. I think it would be to listen um, above all else, right? I, again, you're you're managing, you know, eight, I think, very different personalities um, with eight different or sometimes the lines, but, you know, agenda items, right, that we want to discuss. And, you know, um, we have six ward counselors. And so their initiatives, their goals generally are always going to be focused on their wards, but they also look at citywide issues as well, because it does, when it's citywide, it's inclusive of their ward, right? And it, it impacts them as well. And so it's just being mindful and being intentional about, um, you know, proactively listening to to what those ward counselors would like to see happen. And then for the at-large counselors as well, you know, we are also tuned into what happens to each ward and what happens in each ward and just making sure that, you know, again, whatever comes on to the agenda items, um, that we have for discussions per meeting that we're, you know, trying to put our best foot forward to represent our residents. And the best way to do that as council president is to listen, right, to your colleagues. Liang says the decision about who will be the next council president will be made by the entire city council. She wouldn't say if she intends to make a nomination. Liang was reelected to her fourth two-year term on the city council earlier this month. Finally, longtime Quincy veterans advocate and avid baseball fan Joe Brill has died. Brill suffered a heart attack while attending the Thanksgiving Day football game at Veterans Memorial Stadium. He was 65. Brill was a member of the Sons of the American Legion and was commander of the Morissette Post Squadron 294 in Quincy when he passed away. He was also a U.S. Navy veteran. A staunch advocate for veterans issues, his wife Terry is a member of the Post's Ladies Auxiliary. Brill also loved baseball. You may remember he suffered a heart attack during a Red Sox-Yankees game at Fenway Park back in 2013, but recovered in time to see the Red Sox win the World Series that year. Funeral arrangements for Brill have not yet been announced. And my thanks to Bob Bosworth at the Quincy Sun for providing those photographs. Coming up, Quincy Symphony Orchestra presidents Brian Hickox and conductor Yoichi Utagawa are here next. Welcome back. The Quincy Symphony Orchestra is back to live in person performances. They've already had one this season and there's another one coming up later on this week. So President Brian Hickox and conductor Yuichi Utagawa are here in person to tell us all about it. Hey guys. Hey Joe, yeah, it's wonderful to be here. It yeah. is great to have you both here. Really appreciate it. It's uh, not the first time you've been here in studio actually uh, no, this no, year, but no. first time we're talking about live concerts, Brian, and you've already had your Fall concert. Well, you know, as we evolved from our Zoom calls yeah. uh, yes. here on QA TV <laughs> to in person, and then we had actual performances outside at the Hancock Adam, Adams Common. Yeah. That was wonderful. Again, we really so much appreciate the uh, the invitation from the mayor to play uh, for the community outside, and that's such a great venue. It's super. Yeah, right. I was there for that uh, concert with the Quincy. Uh, Choral Society, that's, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. And yeah. then we most recently had our first indoor performance. Yeah, what was that like? It was, it was great. Surreal. Was great. Uh, it fair to call it surreal? I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was no, surreal. Okay. It was just great. Yeah. It was great to be back, and uh, we weren't sure how many people would come, and we had a decent crowd. That's great. Yeah, we, and we were amazed. Yeah, really. Yeah, we ran out of programs. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Okay. We like to see the exceeding expectations event. So that's yeah. exactly what it. So it was your fall concert, right? Yeah. It was at and Quincy High School. Yeah. So we delayed okay. our uh, 250th celebration of Beethoven's <laughs> birth uh, by one year. Okay. I don't think he was offended. <laughs> we, we would never know. <laughs> he, he wasn't aware of it. He wasn't aware yeah. of it. <laughs> so we, we, won't, we won't tell his family. <laughs> so, so we uh, performed two of his, his fifths, his fifth symphony and his fifth 
piano concerto. Oh, okay. And we had a wonderful solo pianist, Janice Weber. Uh, Yuichi yeah. invited her to join us, and yeah, what a she, marvelous yeah, Oh, performance. she was marvelous. Really? And, and uh, it, you know, she's, uh, she's played all over the world, and, and she's got an interesting multifaceted career. She also is a novelist. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you don't so, not normally see the two yeah, paths cross. And, uh, but um, it w was great. And, and it's inspiring to perform with, you know, with a pianist of her caliber. Really? And, and, uh, and the musicians were thrilled. I was thrilled. The audience was thrilled. Um, and we did the Fifth Symphony with, you know, da 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 da. Everybody right. knows that. Yes. And, uh, it was great. It, it, it's uh, in some ways it, it, it was as if we had never left, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in and, and other ways, it was just a, a wonderful homecoming. To did you see? Did you happen to notice maybe new faces in the audience, uh, perhaps that you hadn't seen before, or maybe some? Yeah. I can speak to that uh -huh. a bit, okay. because uh, following the performance, I went out into the audience, <clears throat> and there were some young teenage um, attendees, mm -hmm. and uh, the parents were saying. The older of the two was so inspired, and mm. he, uh, he was so excited about it, and the interest uh, that they both shared, uh, just from the young person's point of view, is so great to see. Yeah, very nice. Maybe inspiring uh, the next uh, members of the Quincy Symphony in the, uh, in the future. We hope so. We yeah, hope so. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. um, how did member, Brian, as a member of the symphony yourself, uh, not only president, but also a member, how do the musicians feel about being back in person? You know, it's uh, Yuichi always looks towards our performances uh, with hard work ahead of time during the rehearsals. Sure. And, you know, that's uh, when we work the kinks out. And this particular concert was, you know, challenging music that, uh, that we really had to work hard at, especially coming off s many of us of a long layoff. Yeah. And so uh, there was a lot of things to work out. Yuichi brought us through brilliantly, however, and we peaked at the performance, and it was it was well, wonderful. Leave it to the teacher to give you a hard assignment <laughs> <laughs> after a year off. <laughs> was that intentional, Yoichi? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think, uh, but you know, I will say this, uh, the, the people who come out to play in a volunteer work, so th these are all kind of uh, people who, they, you don't, they don't have to be motivated to do something. They want to do this. They right? want to yeah. do it, right? And, and they all practice hard, and they come prepared, and uh, if there's a problem, they know it, and they know that they got to fix it, yeah. and they'll work on it, and and so um, it, it, it's really not a hard process. It's, yeah. it's a fun process. Well, I would yeah. think too that Brian, mm -hmm. you can probably speak better, but I would think you'd want to be challenged, right, to improve your art. Well, when one is in the midst of those challenging <laughs> rehearsals, or I'm not saying it will be easy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> at the time, <laughs> but after the fact, you look back and you say, "Look what I did." Yeah, there's no doubt. There's a uh, the, there's a sense of uh, accomplishment, yeah. of of growth yeah. as a musician, and so we we do look for programming sometimes to stretch our our previously set boundaries. Right. And um, Yoichi's done that over several decades now with the orchestra, and that's fun to see. And some of the programming. Uh, uh, coming up this season and the following season yes. uh, will be new. Really? Uh, really? New yeah. to the orchestra. Yeah. Okay, well that's saying yeah. something for an orchestra that's been around almost 70 years yeah. <laughs> to, to come up with new, uh, new material and new performances. Yeah. Well, well, you know, so for, for example, um, there, there's a much greater appreciation and understanding of the need to, uh, you know, in history there, but there have been some great black composers mm -hmm. that we just haven't, I mean, going to school, I never heard about them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I never learned about them. And then, you know, because of some of the things that have been going on recently, uh, there's a renewed interest in, in listening and looking. Okay. And there's some terrific works out there. Um, and so, and, and by women composers, too. Okay. Um, there have been some great, talented, amazing women composers that I never learned it. Really? Either. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. And it, and it's great to discover that. And so we're going to try to bring some of those things into our programming. Okay. And um, it, it, you know that that's the great thing about doing something like music is that every every day you got something new to learn. And yeah. You're just never going to know even a fraction of it. So. Um. In the uh, immediate future, though, <laughs> yes. we do know it's the uh, tis the season symphony and song uh, annual holiday concert. Right, is coming up Thursday, December second, uh, Quincy High School at seven p.m. 
what's going to be happening this year, Yuichi? Well, uh, that, 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 this is a concert where we do a holiday favorite. Yes. So, uh, yeah. the, but, but the thing that we love so much about it is to, the opportunity to work with the students and the teachers yeah. of the Quincy Public Schools. And this is, uh, this is one of our favorite events because uh, we get there, there's the John Adams String Orchestra. Uh, Judy Lai is their director, and we're going to do a couple numbers with them. And then the teachers, uh, under the leadership of Michael DeMarco, uh, have, uh, are going to do a number that Michael has written an, an arrangement oh, of really? for the orchestra and the teachers. Okay. Speaking of new composers. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. One right here in yeah. our midst. Uh, exactly. Okay. He's terrific. Okay. And, and the teachers are great, of course. And, and it, it's a great chance for the students to see their teachers performing sure. as well. So um, that's a real uh, a blast. And then the combined choirs, yes. the, the two high schools, uh, they're going to do a couple numbers, and then we're going to do a couple numbers with them. Okay. So you know that that's that's always just a, a treat for us, and so it's one of our favorite concerts. Is I it really? Think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it all strictly? You know, holiday favorites. Holiday favorites. Okay. You know, okay. uh, we'll he well, you'll hear sleigh ride in there somewhere, okay. and night Nutcracker, yes. and uh, everything you'd expect from a holiday everything concert. Everything you'd expect. <laughs> some, uh, some Hanukkah tunes. And oh, all right, yeah. sure. Perhaps yeah. even a sing along. Yeah, perhaps a sing along. Okay. With masks on, because. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you brought it up, Yoichi, let me ask you, Brian, um, what is the kind of the COVID uh, protocol for the Quincy Symphony Orchestra? Yes. Well, you know, w we follow so many different entities guidelines sure. uh, protocols that we see you know certainly federal state city and then uh, bringing it down to the local school yes uh, so that's that's our basis that you know that's that's our standard okay uh, and so certainly we would uh, look to each person to bring their own mask okay and uh, uh, the uh, the orchestra not only is mass when they're not performing strings always mass oh. uh, and wind players, brass players, you know, of when course. When they're not playing. Right. Yeah. When they're not playing. Uh, and each of the performers in the orchestra are fully vaccinated. Okay. So we've, we've worked hard at, at those protocols, and thanks to all that have participated with regard to understanding how important this is and, uh, and complying to these new protocols that we've put in place. Sure. Well, here in Massachusetts, uh, the mask mandate for public school buildings, is mm -hmm. which, which you will be in, mm -hmm. has been extended. Um, mm -hmm. So that kind of takes that that decision-making <laughs> process away from you. So. <laughs> um, but that's the only requirement, right, for the that, audience? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good to know. Just want folks to be yep. prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, it's going to look like a traditional uh, holiday concert. There's the, uh, the dinner uh, performance and the VIP seating beforehand, mm -hmm. right? That's always well attended. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the, the concert itself is uh, very, very well attended sure. each year. Uh, but in talking with Keith Sagala year in and year out about the the uh, dinner ahead of time, yep. it's well subscribed. Yes, it's a three-course dinner provided by the uh, students in the culinary arts program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so really letting that art uh, be involved in this as well. So maybe uh, inspiring some uh, some new chefs too at the same time. Dinner and a show. Dinner, dinner and a show. show. <laughs> right here in Quincy. Yeah. Is it earlier this year than in years past? Uh, no, no. You know we okay. we've d we've done the seven o'clock star before. Uh, now the one thing that no, we no, are I mean in the month. Is uh, it earlier uh, in the month? Uh, no, no. It's okay. it's usually about this time. Okay. Of All right. The year. Yeah. And seven o'clock, but yeah, you and seven o'clock, and and this year, what one little twist is, we're mm -hmm. not going to have intermission. We're just going to go oh. from straight seven to eight thirty. Okay. So, uh, and so I think because of COVID protocols and mm -hmm. things like that, um, some orchestras are doing just a, a concert that goes without break. Yes. So yeah, I know the BSO is doing. Yeah, is that is the BSO doing that uh, from time to time? Yes. From time, uh, to time. Yeah. Yeah. you know, we, we've mm -hmm. we've seen that evolve mm -hmm. uh, a little bit with the BSO as yeah. well. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're also doing. You might be aware, Brian, um, a, a show specifically for folks with sensory um, issues, if you will. That's uh, right, and it's it's much more relaxed environment. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember my first BSO concert, a young person's concert, and feeling like you know we needed to be dressed up and yes. sit in our chairs and be well behaved. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's well, Yuichi still has us do that <laughs> at the QSO, but, uh, but the, uh, 
the specific attention to the sensory yes. uh, concert that I understand with the BSO is of just a much more relaxed environment. It's okay to sh shout out during the concert, Absolutely. right, and clap during the concert, and yeah, and really let them experience it. Um, uh, uh, f folks with autism, for instance. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. That's Absolutely. a wonderful idea. Yeah. That's a wonderful I mean, idea. I was, my next yeah. Yeah. line of questioning was, do you think something at the QSO could be something well, similar? Well, you know, uh, all kidding aside, yeah. right, Brian, kidding aside about uh, me being very strict, we, we, <laughs> we actually are pretty loosey-goosey at the Quincy Symphony. I mean, uh, we encourage people to express themselves in yeah. the audience if they like something. Do like you? you okay. Oh, absolutely. You know, like this is this tradition of not clapping between movements right. of the symphony. Yes. Um, we we don't we don't encourage that at okay. all. If you like it, you should clap. All right. Uh, we, we you know we're musicians. We like it when you when, when we get some feedback. <laughs> Feed off of that energy, right? Yeah. And you know, they're, like during holiday pops, they'll, well, there'll be a sing along, yep. and if the music calls for it, they might be a clap along. I, I don't know about holiday pops, but when we yep. do stars and stripes and things like oh, that, sure. you know, yeah. we always want audience participation. Okay. And oh, perhaps in sleigh ride, some people. Oh want yeah. To oh yeah. Way. Yeah, that's right. In sleigh ride, yep. there's uh, every year we kind of goof off with that where the whip part is you know we get people to clap <laughs> okay. along in the audience you know okay. and if they miss we give them a dirt, you know the point the finger at him and say you miss no i'm kidding <laughs> he's even conducting the audience yeah. now. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> Um, now, typically, I know that the uh, superintendent of uh, public schools uh, gets involved uh, with a little conducting. Yeah, you know, I don't know if he's going to do it. Uh, I was going to say, this superintendent he, is a little he, bit yeah, more he reserved. May, yeah, he <laughs> may not do it, uh, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Okay. I, Ke Keith sent me an email and said that I was on my own this year, you know. <laughs> okay. I was thinking about maybe dragging Keith up or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, now he might go for that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we never know what to expect. No, then. no, and, and the thing is, it's... Uh, it is the season. I mean, it's the holidays. Yeah. It should be a joyful celebration. And that's what, I mean, at the Quincy Symphony, we, we want to have fun. Yeah. Right? We want to take it seriously, but it, at the end of the day, if you haven't had any fun, why, why bother? I mean, right? Music is about... It's uh, entertainment, right? It, it's entertainment. It's it's uh, feeling. It's being about uh, being alive and enjoying life. Yeah, and, and certainly this year, maybe a little escapism, too, from from what's going on in, in yeah, the sure. real world. We can all use a little, little escape. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. You talk about feeding off the energy of the mm -hmm. audience. That's something that virtual worlds cannot provide I don't think in the I same in the same so. way yeah. I don't think so there's something about just being in the same room with people in the same space mm -hmm. uh, you can you could feel uh, you know you can feel it and it's uh, I don't know I don't think the metaverse is ever going to yeah, <laughs> <laughs> replace, replace that. I hope it doesn't yeah. I, I don't think it will well each yeah. performance is unique right yeah. I mean it's Absolutely. when it's happening yeah. at that time that is the moment. Yeah. You, you, that's not something that'd be replicated. Yeah. And in playing in a hall, there's the you know once if we're playing in our own practice rooms, mm -hmm. you know it's it's such a solo environment. And even with Zoom, there is some tuning to the other people and things sure. of that sort. But it's not that same one environment that right. we see in a concert hall. And then now fill that with people. Right. And that enhances that energy and that interaction. Yeah, you go from an individual experience to a shared yeah. experience, yes. you know, yeah. a whole different dynamic. And isn't that what music's all about? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yoichi, um, as you're well aware, I'm sure, Stephen Sondheim just, yes. just passed a away. Giant, yeah, a giant. Uh, and, 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 you know, I was uh, reflecting on that and thinking also that uh, there have been so many giants who have come before us. Yes. But the, but the good news is is that there is so much talent in the world. Mm. And, and uh, just very quickly, we, we often do a, a youth competition. Yes, right, yes. And, and we're always floored, floored, right, by the, the, the amount of talent, young talent that comes in and plays for us. We're like, we're judging them? Right. I mean, you know. Yeah, you've talked about this yeah, before. And, and, yeah, and I, I, I tell you that, that uh, there have been great giants, but believe me, there are going to be giants coming forward. So th that bodes well for the human race. Well, not, <laughs> not only uh, with regard to our concerto competition, mm -hmm. uh, which the uh, soloist will perform in May okay. at our Youth Performs concert, uh, but also we have a special treat in in February, our oh. February 20th concert. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, some 50 years ago, uh, Victor Rominal uh -huh. uh, was a 10 year old violinist, young prodigy who played with the Quincy Symphony Orchestra. Really? Some 50 years later, we've invited him back. Over the past period of time, we've lent him out to the Boston Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> And on <laughs> February 20th, he comes back home to the Quincy <laughs> Symphony Orchestra to perform Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto in E minor. 
Yeah. Wow. That'll We're so looking forward to yeah, that. That'll be exciting. February the 20th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that your next concert after yes. Tuesday season? That's, that's right. That's the yes. winter concert. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know he didn't forget his roots, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> so as we speak about um, the quality or yeah. the talent of youth, mm -hmm. well, there it was some 50 years ago in our midst, and who would have known that he would have such a prolific career with the Boston Symphony Orchestra, one yeah. of the great institutions of uh, symphony music in the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is something to look forward to yeah. after this, uh, for sure. And the, the concert. Uh, for Tis the Season. Is this also, it used to be a fundraiser for the Quincy Public Schools? Is that, is that yes, still part of it? Yes, and okay. it still is. It still is. And so uh, it, it's, it's great to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah there, there's just no down. It's all up, you know. Sure, <laughs> sure. Win, 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 you know. Uh, good time to mention, too, that the Symphony is a, uh, a nonprofit organization that is sustained by donations. Uh, so every uh, ticket that you sell uh, goes right back into the uh, to the symphony's uh scheduling and operations. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're, we're so appreciative and uh, dependent upon uh, the philanthropy of our community, of our local government, yes. uh, individuals. Uh, it, it, it truly makes um, the world go round for our uh, community orchestra. Yeah. Uh, and if anyone has any specific requests, they can reach out to me directly. Mm -hmm. uh, my email address is president at Quincy Symphony Orchestra dot org. Okay. Uh, I've had a number of people recently want to participate in some uh, um, benevolent uh, contributions or uh, you know some some remembrances of okay. family members sure. or other musicians, nice. and they can contact me directly, and I will make special arrangements for that. Great. I want to wish you both a very happy holiday season. Thank you very much. Look forward to 2021-2022 uh, for the QSO. Thank you so much. As yeah. always, a pleasure. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get out there. Clouds, a little bit of sunshine, right around 40 degrees, down to the upper 20s this evening. More of the same tomorrow. Clouds and sun around 40, a little warmer on Wednesday. Showers and low 50s for Thursday. Thanks again to Brian Hickox and Yuichi Ugawa for coming Thank in today. You. Thanks, Joe. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Friday on the program, Paula Fleming is here from the Better Business Bureau. We're going to talk about holiday scams. Until then, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.